This is my space. I throw elbows when I talk. All right, the Administration and Finance Committee will come to order. Uh, all five members are present. And item one is a discussion of the 2023 City of West Dallas Mayor's recommended budget. Mayor Devine. Thanks, Mr. Chair. We're back. Um, I'm happy to present to you the recommended budget for 2023 and strategic plan. There are, as you probably saw in the um, cover letter, a couple of initiatives I just want to talk briefly about before we go into the, the deep dive. Um, a lot of things are continuing that we started last year. There is one that I want to um, talk about right off the bat because I'm sure when you read it, you wanted to make sure you read it correctly, but that is a pilot sterilization project for uh, rodents, which is actually something that was sent to me by a resident. It was um, showing success in, I believe it was Tucson. It was a city in Arizona, and this is a liquid milkish liquid that apparently rodents go crazy for and it sterilizes them and then the first question I had was what about people's pets if they drink this milk and then there's a part of me that thinks you should have your pet spayed or neutered already so um, I we're still looking into the depth of that but there is money in the budget to try that as kind of a pilot program this year I don't yet know if this liquid freezes if it's going to be seasonal but it is something we're considering. Also highlight the continued use and expansion of the flock security cameras that we tried last year and they have had just tons of successes in highlighting stolen cars and often these stolen cars have drugs, weapons, things like that um, in them. So the initial pilot program had um, a certain amount, $25,000 worth, I believe it was 21 cameras going down to 10, but this will bring that back up close to 2021 cameras for the city. And there are several other um, safety and efficiency elements in the Axon product that is listed for our officers. There are some alignments to the strategic plan. And I wanna talk quickly about the 2.5 annual increase for regular general fund employees. We are always talking with other communities on what they're doing and trying to remain competitive in the public sector and not lose people to the private sector. So we did try to put in as much of an annual increase as we could, and it continues the trend of um, incentivizing people to live in the city uh, with extra funds for that. So I will say last year, the budget for this year was one of the most difficult budgets I've experienced. This year was definitely difficult and definitely tough, but it was not as bad as last year, and those reasons will get highlighted in the PowerPoint this evening. So the question everyone's going to ask is how will this impact an average home in West Dallas? And that would be about $15 a year on the city portion of property taxes which I always like to break down to, this is about $1.25 a month, and it's about, I believe it's 31 cents a week to initiate all of these um, proposals and, and within the budget. So with that being said, I wanna thank all of you for the leadership, I wanna thank the leadership team for the city, and I wanna give very um, strong and specific thanks to Jason Kaczmarek, and the Deputy Director in Finance, Chris Mullen, as well as City Administrator, Rebecca Grill. So the public hearing will take place on the 1st of November. The Council will vote on this on November 15th. If anybody has any amendments, um, we ask that you get those in by October 27th, I believe it was, 28th. Friday. Friday, yeah. I don't know if anybody has any questions at this point, otherwise I will turn things over to the um, City Administrator. statement as well as uh, demographics and our strategic plan focus before we dive into uh, the budget. So we're working to become the preferred city for visitors, residents, and businesses, and how we're doing that is through cost-effective municipal services, um, providing for the health, safety, and welfare of the community, 
and we're always looking at um, progressive approaches to how we're providing these services. The demographics of the city are um, a little bit over 60,000. We seem to be going back and forth about that 60,000. The owner occupied last year it was 52 point, just 52 percent, so it went up 0.3 percent. Mm -hmm. um, the median value, I think it was 147 last year, so it's gone up a little. And then the household income has gone up about 1,500. Uh, persons in poverty, I believe that stayed the same. And the persons over 65, I believe that went up 0.4 since last year. The strategic plan that the council adopted for 2022-26, we have uh, five different focus areas. Community, destination, financial, infrastructure, and organizational excellence. So along with the uh, focused budget priorities, all of the business plans and the activities of the departments are uh, developed around the strategic plan. The mayor discussed uh, the budget priorities. There's two components, the neighborhood initiatives and the public safety. Um, so we're going to continue to focus on the neighborhood associations. Um, we're working um, to possibly have a pavilion at Liberty Heights. Um, you mentioned the pest control measures. And then we're going to be utilizing more of the, um, utilize, utilizing the summary abatement ordinance that the council passed in August. Um, the plot flat cameras here already mentioned, and then additional parking enforcement, and then the expansion of the Exxon product. Usually I just put the city focus challenges here and talked a little bit about the levy limits and the expenditure restraint, but we're really <coughs> coming up on the state funding structure um, is just unsustainable for us. We're very lucky this year that we had some changes in revenue as well as a 0% increase for our health insurance. If, but not for that, we might be in the same place that we were last year with eliminating positions that were filled. And so um, we just really, we really need to focus with the legislators to to get them to understand um, that this is not a sustainable course for municipalities. We are one of the, of the states that has the highest reliance on property taxes for operations. Our state age, aides have been stagnant for years, and then we have the expenditure restraint and levy limits. Our public safety budget growth is um, grows faster than our normal general government. We have the aging infrastructure, as I mentioned about recruiting and retention of the employees, and then we have the um, taxpayer limitations for the city. So here's a little bit about the over-reliance on property taxes. So for the city of West Dallas, 63% of our revenues for the general fund are property taxes. Um, and then, sorry, ahead. and this would be typical for a Wisconsin community. And then also notice how the, the next biggest chunk, 19%, almost entirely of state aids as well. So very little room for additional revenue growth outside of um, taxes and state, um, state aids. And we're limited in increasing the taxes too because of the levy, levy, levy limits. Not that you would want to do that, but that is limited too. Um, the state aids have remained flat for many years. Jason, did you want to talk about this? Sure. So, I mean, just going back to this slide here quickly too. So a, a pretty decent chunk here, 19%. Um, actually, technically 18% of that whole piece <coughs> there is just state aids itself. Um, the state has kept that flat. So at least with our, our levy, they allow us to go up a little bit, but they've kept the state aids just, it's, it's like a handcuff almost. Uh, we get to use it for our general operations of the city, but they're not giving us any more to offset uh, cost increases. And on that subject, Jason, the state has 
four billion dollars extra. Uh, is is that the number? Am I correct? Uh, if and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. I had heard three to four. Yeah, three billion dollars surplus extra. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. And I, I just made a point in here on this slide too that even if they gave us a modest two percent increase, we could have you know doubled our capacity that we can we got with the levy limit. So just even that little bit would would help quite a bit. And then you're all familiar with the expenditure restraint program. We get about one point five million dollars a year if we limit our expenditures. Um, this year, if we were just under this, we would have been able to raise, what, like 6 or 7 percent? Um, yeah, so th <laughs> this year's limit was 8.1 percent. Okay. It was unbelievable. Yeah, but there's, we were not able to take advantage of that. So. And then the history of the expenditure <coughs> restraint, it was established in 1990. Um, in 94, you had to maintain five mills, up, and it was changed. Um, funding was set at 42 million. In 2003, it went up to 58 million for 300, about 100 more towns, villages, and cities. And since then, it's remained at the 2003 levels. So it's. <laughs> We can't do without it. It would it would give us a a whole <coughs> three million dollars. And then we have the levy limits, which is we're we're more familiar with these now as we're constrained mostly by this. So um, we can only go up a certain amount based on our net new construction. And you're familiar with the fact that we're a fully built city, so we don't have a lot of net new construction. So if we if we exceed our levy limit, then we lose state aids. So we're just, as Jason said, handcuffed all the way around. Our net new construction for um, this budget is around 0.65%, which is right in line with like average for the city of West Dallas. But you compare that to um, typical cost increases of two and a half percent. It just, it, it's, it's not going to work. Um, there, there has, there has been uh, changes to the history of the levy limits over time. Here's just a, a recap here. Um, there wasn't always a levy limit in place. Uh, back in 2005, it was two percent. And then for a few years there, they I think they changed it probably annually. It ranged from 2% to 3.86%. But for the uh, 2012 uh, budgets, they finally got rid of that and just said, no, it's it's 0% or your net new construction. And that's really just City of Milwaukee and other inner ring suburbs that that's affecting, right? It wouldn't affect, like, say, Franklin. They still have farm fields, obviously, that they're building on I think Franklin is doing a little bit better um, if you're a growing community that's not going to be an issue right but there are quite a few communities that aren't on a growing trend mm -hmm. even though they're not fully built out we just so happen that we're just limited because the city's already fully built um, here's a here's a graph of expenditures by department uh, you guys see this uh, every year, this is also typical uh, for municipalities. Public safety has um, almost two thirds of the pie, and then we've got <clears throat> public works uh, with the next biggest piece. And here's a comparison of uh, 2012 to 2023. So, 2012 is notable because that's when the changes um, to the levy limit occurred, with the the floor being taken away so um, you can see the expenditure or the increases um, from them so two to six percent depending upon department for the personnel we're 
the recommended budget is taking an additional almost six positions, not filled positions, um, so that would result in 538.65 positions. Um, I believe when I started here, we are at like 580 or something. Um, so we're down from 544 last year, and then we almost, almost <coughs> 500 are the general fund, which really affect, um, our are affected by the levy limits. And then we have other funding sources, grants and things like that, reimbursements. Um, here's a, a snapshot of uh, in 2017 versus 2023, the number of positions, yeah, 580, although it came in 2016. But um, the numbers weren't exactly, they didn't line up from 2012, so I started with 2017, but because that's also been the most significant reductions too. So we've done, gone down almost 42 positions. The majority of them are in the public works department. And then as a reminder, over 80% of our budget is personnel costs. So the general fund budget, so about $55 million. And just a note about the WRS contributions, they went up um, quite large, uh, a lot for police and fire for the general fund. Um, general employees got some minimal increase. And we pay half, half um, for the police. We contribute more and also for the fire. But fire doesn't participate in social security, so that's why there's a difference <coughs> at the end. <coughs> Yeah, so um, the increase to general employees, the employer contribution went up 0.3%. Uh, that's a typical kind of adjustment that I've seen. I've never seen an increase like we have this time around for public safety. Uh, the WRS system increased over 1% for each of those categories. That's a significant change in one year. I don't, and I, I don't know the reason for that. I don't know why it's, it's uh, earmarked only for those two categories, but that, that was a big change. And so any salary increases <coughs> it are affected, and we have to pay more for the WRS. Um, here's the current OPEB um, obligations that we're paying for. We have an overall OPEB of over $100 million, but this is what we're projecting for 2023, so you can see the police and fire departments are over a million dollars and the other departments are less. Um, of note, most of the people in the general departments will work later in their career. They'll work until age 60 or 65, police and fire. I believe you can retire at 50 for fire and 53 for police. 50 with penalty, 53 okay. without penalty. That means that you have more employees than <coughs> So for this year, we have a gap of 1.3 million. All the challenges that we talked about before <coughs> resulted in that gap. Um, we were only able to raise our levy by $215,000. And um, so we had to fill, fill that, that gap somehow. So, um, we were able to do that this year through increase in revenues, as I mentioned before. So we had the levy limit allowance and then the ambulance charges. That was a significant increase. So that's helped our interest earnings, our estimated go up and then uh, parking revenue, but that's offset by additional labor costs. As I mentioned before, there's an estimated 0% increase for 2023 for our health insurance. So that, those two things <coughs> saved us. But this is a one year, because um, <laughs> I don't anticipate that we'll have another 0% increase mm -hmm. next year. Um, I think we're still trying to catch up from COVID and things like that. Um, but yeah, so that, that's how we're able to make it this year. <coughs> we do have a few position changes that I can go over too. So 
in the assessor's office, there's a recommendation to move a, one of the code enforcement uh, positions to the assessor's office to be an assessment technician. We, we previously had three people as um, admins in code enforcement. Last year we moved one of them to the CSC. Um, this year the recommendation is to move the other to the assessor. They would still be helping out in code enforcement, but with our new um, software solution and different efficiencies, um, the need for um, focus administrative staff is reducing. So um, the other one, other recommendation is, aside from moving that administrative administrative position is moving the zoning administrator from the planning and zoning to code enforcement to focus to help focus on the nuisance enforcement activities. Currently that position is not filled and it hasn't been filled all year. There's some changes in the deputy chief positions in mobile integrated health, um, changing those to captains. I mentioned before the moving of the zoning administrator, the police there's an elimination of one administrative position in, and then um, there's additional funding for the parking enforcement. Public Works has a few changes again, um, changing the yard attendant to the truck driver so for more flexibility if they need to have more people on the street then they can close the yard and that person can go out there, eliminate our HVAC tech eliminate our inventory services specialists. We have asset works in there and we're implementing a barcode. Um, we've been talking about that for a while, so I'm hopeful that we, we get that done. Um, and then three maintenance repairs, one in the sanitation and streets and uh, two in the water department. Some of the benefits of um, asset works have been able, have you, managers have been able to look at the different labor and um, do, there's a lot of sharing amongst the departments now before it was a little more siloed. So. These are specific changes. If you read through the whole budget document, these are on the bottom of the, um, each of the departments. So for the IT budget, um, there you will see a reduction, but that's because we've moved some software from their department into finance and into the clerk's office. Um, so, <coughs> and asset works too, to the pub to public works. So it's not as if they're having a, an actual decrease. It's just an exchange. And then finance, you wanna sure. talk about that? So yeah, as Rebecca mentioned, uh, the biggest increase in finance is just the shifting of uh, the financial software costs over to the finance department. Uh, but then there was also a grossing up of salaries that we did this year. Uh, in prior years, uh, we would take portions of our staff salary and that would get directly allocated to utilities. Instead, we changed it this year so that uh, salaries are grossed up so you can see the full cost in, in the finance department. And then on the back end, there's a revenue reimbursement that comes from the utilities. So just a change in the way that we're accounting for it. I think it brings a little more clarity overall. Thank you. And then you mentioned in the clerk's office, we're taking um, the OpenGov software in our in the budget there. So there's an increase due to that. Um, please, we're, there's an estimate for a contract increase. We're not. Sure, we're still negotiating. We have no idea. Um, there's also was an increase in dispatcher salaries this year, and then we talked about the pension already, um, and then they also had items shifted from IT. But <coughs> there's additional twenty-five thousand dollars for the parking enforcement as well as the flat cameras. Any questions so far? Yeah, Rebecca, you said it, I want to say it again so we all catch this, regarding positions last year and the last budget we had to lay off seven people. Uh, this proposed budget reduces positions, but they're open positions, so we're not actually <coughs> laying anyone off. Right. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, so one of the efficiencies we're seeing of 
assets asset works is we're able to be more efficient at public works with the barcoding of inventory and this is the benefit of us going online going away from paper to digital management of our space of our general processes so we picked up one we're, we were able to gain one position this year how much longer will are we still we're still evolving <coughs> through this are we going to be able to gain more efficiencies in the coming years do we know like it's probably a tough question i bet <coughs> I'm going, so it's uh, almost one full calendar year that all divisions have implemented works. so we're hoping within a, a year to two years that we can see some more efficiencies. One more, one more spot, hopefully. <laughs> I know we've been in that tough spot here where we were still one foot in the past and one foot in the future, and we were kind of having to pay for both. And now we're, we're getting caught up on that. And it's not all technology either, efficiencies, but it's collaboration that Rebecca has mentioned. Okay. Um, it's just uh, congrats to the staff, the management staff, the superintendents, supervisors. Um, when there's an issue, it's pretty much everybody does the, uh, you know, the essential, uh, the work that needs to be done. <coughs> And then we all kind of collaborate and see who's available. Yeah. Now, again, there's certain job tasks that are on hold. Could be for one day, three days, or five days, depending on the urgency. Yeah, we saw again, that with the tornado last week. Yeah. Has been great about yeah. patience. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. And being a team player, so to speak, realize <coughs> that it's going to take some time. Yeah. Thank when, you. I don't know when we changed that. CDL requirement, but now all of the employees there are required to have a CDL license so that if we need them to, they can plow. And that was a change from before. And so that's that's helped a lot right. with flexibility. overtime yeah. and flexibility and that kind of thing. So, yeah, so it's a combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the fire department, same with. Um, as with the police department, we're still in negotiations. Uh, we continue to have three vacant firefighter positions. They're not funded. Um, there's some changes due to grants funding. And then uh, mentioned before about the pension, retiree benefits, we have those listed in the, I think, police, fire, public works, and the health department. Yes. There's line items yep. for each of those departments so you can see the residual effects of the retirements in those those departments specifically. So. so so overall the goal with some of these changes is greater transparency in the cost centers. You know, to have you know, going back to the IT software, to have finance software sitting in IT doesn't help you guys, right. you know, but if you put it in finance, oh okay, that makes more sense. And it's the same thing with these retiree, retiree <coughs> benefits. If it's just commingled in a general uh, department, it doesn't really paint a picture. So we're, we're trying to put costs where uh, we can make better decisions. And I think it helps us also with a message to people on the state level about what we're, what we're focusing on and what the situations that we're dealing with. The health department, um, there's a lot of changes there regarding with the coding grants and things like that. So um, we were phasing out people being on a lot of the grants. So there's an increase in their salaries this year, but it's not an <coughs> increase in people. It's just them coming off, off the, the grant. grant. And, um, and then the retiree benefit. The library, um, they reduced a lot of <coughs> staffing there. Um, I think they're they looking at they've been looking at reducing the number of people at their circulation desk and the customer, the front desk. So that has helped reduce um, a lot of their part time positions. Talked about the public works. Um, we. It's been very challenging in the public works um, department to maintain employees or retain them. Um, we're fighting not only against other municipalities, but other levels of government and other, you know, the private sector. So we've been losing people. We can't even compete with, they're getting 10 or $15 more an hour. And just from a 
internal equity perspective, we can't we can't give that person that because then we you know we be giving it to everyone else, and then there's just a huge ripple effect. But as the mayor mentioned, we're hoping um, somewhat with a more reasonable annual increase. Plus, we've been doing market adjustments. Um, the council's been approving those as we um, as we need to. Um, I believe there's one tomorrow night mechanics. Um, so we appreciate the support in that. Um, in those, it's it's been a, a huge challenge for public works. And I think as going into winter, the mechanics we're gonna it's gonna be a struggle. So we're down three. Yeah. So we currently only have three mechanics. We used to have a total of seven. So it's going to be kind of trying, so to speak. Hopefully we'll have a late <laughs> winter. Not that one, yeah. So that's why they, that um, file is before you <laughs> tomorrow night <laughs> for adjusting those. Um, engineering, there's uh, been a lot of looking at um, billing out to the projects and um, to the different water and things like that. Um, so there's a more accurate um, billing out. So there's a reduction in their their salaries. Any we, to add? We, we try and look at um, the prior year's history when it comes to, you know, the putting together the budget. And the engineers keep track in very detail uh, the hours that they spend on all the different projects and utilities. So they can look back in the last year and go, oh, yeah, we're seeing an increasing trend in the number of hours that we're spending on utility work. And then we just make that adjustment every year in the budget. And that's another department that we have challenges recruiting for <coughs> engineers. Um, promotions, uh, there's an increase for part-time marketing, uh, a market attendant. We have a lot more events going on at the farmer's market, so this person will be supporting that, those activities. And then communications, previously they were in their own special revenue fund because we would get fran franchise fees, and so they were kept out of the general fund, but then the franchise fees, part of them got paid to us as a revenue. So this budget recommends bringing them back into the general fund, and the impact is minimal because we already get the revenue. We're still getting the revenue that we were getting before. It's just not going kind of in a circle. So, Part of the, the reason for making this change, too, is uh, um, those franchise fees have been on a downward trend since 2012. And at some point, um, <coughs> operating the communications fund as a separate fund just isn't going to be sustainable anymore. Uh, and we have, from a technical perspective, a lot of capacity from the expenditure side because of ERP to be able to just merge this in. Um, and then it, it's not going to be an issue. There's a little bit more about our revenues. Our taxes are estimated at $42 million. $13 million for grants and aids, a little over $2 million for license permits, uh, almost $2 million <coughs> for items and forfeitures. We have charges for services, and then a little over $3 million for miscellaneous. Did you want to talk about the charges for services a little bit? Um, I, I guess I'll add that um, the ambulance revenue, so that, that large increase of 660000 estimated, because of the Medicaid, uh, additional Medicaid money that we're getting, that's included in that charges for services line item. And then here are the expenditures. We have uh, general government about $10 million, public safety almost $40 million, public works 12 and a half, health and human services, which is essentially the health department at 2.1. Culture and Recreation, 2.4, I believe that's the library and the senior center, and Conservation and Development at 645, <coughs> that's Planning and Development Department. We've broken that out separately. I believe that's a, actually a separate um, category for the state reporting for the budget, correct? You're talking about the health one? And the Conservation and Conservation and, and Development. Yeah, if you look at the statutes, these are the 
um, category requirements that the state has. So we're, we're following those at this point. So. Here's the history and the, oh, I'll let Jason do this since there's lots of numbers. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, uh, equalized value on the top left there is probably the, this might be the biggest increase we'll ever see. Mm -hmm. That was 15%. Um, moving over to assess value, uh, completely different way of, of valuing the property. You can see that it, it doesn't go up at that whole 15% mark. But our tax rate looking at going from uh, $12.02, I'm estimating to go to $12.12. Uh, moving on down to the bottom, this is my best guess, okay, because I don't know what the levies are going to be for all the other taxing jurisdictions, but estimating uh, $27.87 on the total tax rate, and then just a recap of uh, historical um, general fund budgets. Recommended budget has an increase of fifteen dollars on the average home of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So their tax, the city portion of the taxes would be eighteen hundred and eighteen dollars. And that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of assessed yes, value, value, correct? Not fair market value. Yeah. Yes. So, um, the next steps, if there's a meeting needed next Monday, we could have one. We're waiting to get additional information from the state so we can calculate the final tax rate. Um, the public hearing um, <coughs> as mentioned is on November 1st, and then the council will um, consider and vote on the budget on November 15th. <coughs> Do you have any questions for us? Mr. Chair? Alderman Weigel. Not so much a question, just a comment. Um, Older person wrote and I attended a, I don't know, neighborhood meeting, whatever it's called, last week. It was hosted by the two county supervisors that cover West Allis. And much of it was devoted to the exact same thing about how the county is hamstrung by the funding. And all they have all the same problems <coughs> as far as retaining staff and all that. So this is not peculiar to West Allis, nor even village, towns, municipalities, or cities. This is, this is the state of Wisconsin, how they're treating all of the other units of government here. And we're all in, in similar boats, not the same boat, because we're built out. Um, and on the staffing issue, just one interesting thing. I had asked how um, there's a private Hoyt Park pool is run separately, and they managed to somehow staff their lifeguards, whereas many of us know that the, there was a lifeguard shortage. It was said at the meeting that the lifeguards at Hoyt Park make $33 an hour. Oh. They're hiring. That, that's, you're not the only person to say it. <laughs> and, they, and they feed them. <laughs> and they get free pizza too. They feed them. <laughs> yeah. So these, these are the these are this is the world we're living in right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. And I'll add about the county situation. The county has a wheel tax too. Well, I was going to bring that ask that up. Well, I, we're going to call it vehicle registration fee, right? <laughs> Don't say wheel tax. <laughs> Would it, wouldn't solve our problem. Wouldn't solve our problem. No, because most of that is outside of the levy. Yeah, yeah. The debt service. So. And it probably would, it, and it's just impactful for the residents. It's not, you know, a citywide. We talked about the other it's options. Sharing a pain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the next slide, just some information. I had this on last year. People wonder why you spend money on the signs or murals or Burnham streetscaping. There's different funding sources for these type of things or prioritization of um, <coughs> neighborhoods and just revitalization. So I just thought I would put that in there again. Um, I'm sure there'll be some other questions about why we're spending money on something, but these, were, these are common things that Alderman salaries, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that too. That's all we have for our presentation. I, I, I do have um, two more comments. I, so we pretty much covered um, the general fund, the general operations of the city. Included in the overall budget, though, if you think about the utilities, 
there's going to be, uh, we're going to recommend two rate increases. Uh, the sanitary utility hasn't had a rate increase since I think 2018, and at that time it was it was 20 cents. We're going to be recommending the same increase uh, for 2023, and I believe the estimated average impact to a resident is going to be about $20. Um, also for uh, 2023, the, in the 2023 budget for the um, solid waste utility, we're recommending, I think it's, um, I don't know the exact, unfortunately I don't have the exact figure here, but I think it's going to be about a $30 <laughs> annual increase for the garbage and recycling. What's driving that one in particular is uh, the um, dumping fees. We have a new contract that we signed this year and we're now getting the full impact of that, uh, finally starting in 2023. Yeah, specifically recycling, we were getting that mm -hmm. for free. We didn't have to pay anything, and now we have to pay to yep. do our recycling. And they probably have to pay their drivers. Fuel and payroll costs are going mm -hmm. up for across the town. Any other questions? A uh, question, Mr. Chair? Please. Um, not really a question, more of a statement. I was happy to see that um, the positions that are being eliminated weren't filled. Um, it was tough last year um, having to make those decisions, and I'm happy that the focus is still on the employees and the increases, quality employees is huge. Um, you know, looking around the internet, you're, you're correct, it's a hard market to compete with. Um, so what we can do to retain and keep the employees um, happy in here, um, I fully support. So I appreciate um, staff and leaders taking into account, and I hope city employees realize that Last year, we were a little bit more handcuffed, and as you can see this year, I feel like staff and everyone went above and beyond to retain what we had and that they are truly appreciated. Um, so I think that'll help and show. Um, and I'm curious to see how that sterilization goes. Um, <laughs> you and me both. When I first read it, I'm like, what are we giving them, baths? Like, <laughs> We got little rat baths, you know. So. I, can, I can send you the link if you're interested. It's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of uh, fascinating, I guess I'd yeah. say. And it's just never, I mean, I've done so much research, and I know the health department has too, on what are other cities doing, what are other cities doing. And then one of our posts on the efforts that we've been taking on this year to, to tackle it, uh, somebody sent me a message, I believe it was through Facebook, and just said, have you seen this? And I yeah. was like, nope, but I'm very intrigued. Nice. Yeah, if you could send that to me. Sure. Thanks. And on that subject, too, I want to add, that's something that we as older people and you, Mayor, I know here it's probably mm -hmm. the number one or number two issue is rats, rats, rats that we hear from our constituents. Yeah. And I think it is important that we're able to show folks, well, this is concrete, what we're doing, this is what's happening, I think doing something mm -hmm. and, and ex looking into this and having a funding source uh, is, a, is a great idea. If I, if I could, Mr. Chair, just on that note, anyone here who's done a, a walk along with the environmentalists knows that it's not just going to be the city fixing this problem. We need every resident and business to be part of the solution. And if some of the yards and alleys I saw and the condition they were kept in earlier this year walking around, I it gave me little hope that we'd ever get where we'd like to be on this unless people really start helping us out. Right on that. I hope that we enforce the new yeah. ordinance exactly. a little bit more rather than sending a letter. Um, they'll end up in the garbage that the rat takes to their little home. <laughs> to make a nest. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to mention, I think there's been a lot of collaboration with the rodent abatement efforts this year. The departments yes. have really stepped up and worked together, and that's really been helpful in addressing that and, um, I guess, illustrating to our residents that it is a priority for the city. So I just really appreciate all their 
um, work, their Efforts. hard work and working together. Mm -hmm. All right. So do we need uh, another meeting next Monday? <clears throat> well, to be the talk about the same Monday's? thing that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking no, I if I don't lead the committee that no. way. No. Mr. Chair? Yeah. yeah. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to thank uh, Jason and Chris again for all their hard work. It's, it's Chris been, Moan? I is yes. yeah, okay. I would say it's been a pleasure to do the budget this year, but it's been a, a thousand percent better than it has been in the past years. And that's not, and I'm not talking about the difficult decisions. I'm talking about just the administrative and the legwork of putting things together. They've really done a lot to make it easier for. Me and the department, I think everyone in this room would agree our capital improvement process and the budget process have, has greatly improved over the last two years. So thank well, you. Thank you. And, and thanks to Chris. She did a ton of work this year. And even with all the work that she did designing a new process, um, she said we were, we were still ahead of where we were in prior years. So it's good. All right. Anything else to come before the committee? Well, we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're adjourned. Thanks.